Also, you may not interrupt another speaker unless you are raising a point of order due to a breach in the rules. Another member making an error in fact during his debate is not a breach of the rules. Attempting to correct another speaker's error of fact is not a valid point of order. If you wish to correct another speaker's error of fact, you must use your own debate time to do so. When speaking, you must address the chair, and you must not speak directly to any other member in debate. All comments must be addressed through the chair. Because there are so many people present, if you wish to speak, you need to come to the microphone located in here uh, after being recognized. And we would like to have more microphones, but we were under short notice for doing this. Are there any questions on procedure before we, before we go on to the business at hand? Mr. Yalla. Am I correct? You can face the audience. Um, am I correct in assuming that since the WesterCon standing rules and bylaws do not address this topic, that we are operating under the Robert standard rules for debate time? That is correct. I intend to address debate in my comments after the site selection report. <laughs> The first item of business before us is the WesterCon 66 site selection. The chair recognizes Ms. Sharon Sabarski, head of the site selection balloting committee, to present the results. Sharon, I thought you might want, I thought you were going to do before my thing. Thank you. Thank my staff, Rick Lomchak, for his help in running site selection and the services of the <laughs> and the services of various convention departments, um, ops, treasury, and registration, and information for their various assistance on the two days. WesterCon 66 site selection had um, six mail-in ballots. On Friday, 12 people showed up to um, submit a ballot. And on Saturday, step back a little further, uh, there were 74 ballots for a total of 92 ballots cast. Uh, members paid $25 towards WesterCon 66 in order to cast a ballot. The results of the county of the ballot were mail-in, one for a town in Alaska that I still can't pronounce, <laughs> uh, five for Portland for a total of six ballots um, that were mailed into the convention. On Friday, there were 12 ballots that were distributed, six ballots for Portland, four for Gonzales, and two no preference. On Saturday, there were 28 ballots for Portland, 37 ballots for Gonzales, one for both, one for none of the above, and six no preference. <laughs> that gave us a total of 83 ballots with preference. And no um, bid got a majority um, needed of 42 ballots. We redistributed the Alaska, both, and none of the above, all at the same time, to the results of whether those ballots were voting for Portland or Gonzalez. Those redistributed ballots, let's switch. <laughs> were Gonzales plus one for 42 ballots, and Portland 39 plus one plus one for 41 ballots. At which point, Gonzales had the majority of those having preference in the balloting of West Pond 66. Um, at that point, when those results were um, uh, certified um, by the rest of the council committee, I called Mr. Stanley uh, as chair of this meeting to see the results and um, change the procedures of this morning's business meeting. <laughs> Thank you. The chair congratulates Mrs. Barsky operating under somewhat 
But unless Kuma Bear agrees to run the Western Con, the chair will rule the motion out of order. And I might add, I have a written statement here with, with the bear's chop on it, uh, disclaiming any desire to run a Western Con. <laughs> You may propose a bid run by people not present here, but those people must somehow make it known to us immediately by some means that they are prepared to accept that nomination. You must be present at this meeting to vote, and you must be a member of this convention to vote. That means you have a membership convention. No proxies are permitted. There are debate limits. They are the defaults under Robert's Rules of Order. On any particular question, nobody, nobody may speak a second time until everyone who wants to speak a first time has had an opportunity to do so. We can also adopt specific debate time limits on any particular question, but that takes a two-thirds vote, and uh, as does a motion to shut off debate entirely on any given question. Motions to amend the Westercon bylaws are not in order at this time because we are in site selection business. You can make those motions later in the meeting once all site selection business is complete or put aside in some way. Are there any questions regarding procedure before we go on to resolving site selection? Mr. Glazer. Assume that uh, one proposal is given, let's call it X1 shall run uh, a committee, and that, that is voted down. And then X2 is presented, and X2 is voted down. Is X1 eligible to be renominated after that? No. Um, because of the non renewability of a motion for any particular site, once you have voted down any particular site, that site is not eligible again unless we were to reconsider the vote on it, which would require one of the people who voted against it, or, yeah, one of the people who voted against it to move to reconsider. Uh, Tony. And remember, those people who are trying to raise their hands, unless you are unable to stand, I'm not going to call on you at all. It was my understanding that it was the committee who voted on and not the site. That is correct. So a different committee could vote, could fit for the same site. That's true. In shorthand terms, we are apt to call it a site, but we are actually discussing committees. Um, uh, Mr. Colombo. With apologies, Mr. Stanley, I would like to move to go on community the hall and hear from all possible bidders, including Granzilla, um, Portland, and Utah, who might decide to move up a year, and anyone else, before we actually start uh, considering uh, committees. That is a motion to suspend the rules and take up uh, take it up in a slightly different order. Is there a second to the member's motion? All right. This motion is not debatable. Two-thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules. Uh, although, I will try it by show of hands first. All those who wish to suspend the rules and entertain and hear statements from potential Western Condis, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The, the, affirmative ha the, the affirmative has it. Are there groups present in this room who have a desire to make presentations regarding a potential Western Condis? Do they go ahead and stand up at this time? Okay, I see there's one groups one and two. Which has a third group? A fourth group? Are there any others? This is your opportunity. I will not. I will not come back later to this. Okay. Let me see here. Um, the chair. Well, okay. That's uh, so. It's Portland and the grand, the, the group that ran the Grand Zellas did in Utah and I believe Hawaii. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, Mr. Larson. Uh, I was going to, going to suggest using uh, match. Now the chair suggests proceeding in this order to first have a presentation from Portland who with the, the group that didn't actually have a, a slot on the bid, followed by the Grand Zellas bid that received the majority of the votes, followed by the Utah committee that has announced a bid for the following year, followed by Hawaii. Is there any objection to following this procedure? Question Here, on the floor. Is Hawaii bidding for 2012? And if they are, can they please with, uh, The member has not been recognized. And the member did not rise to be recognized. Well, what per the member please come to the microphone and state their question. Question was <laughs> Sorry, Toby Schneider, Raycom staff, past Westercom staff. The question was if Utah was considering to move their bid to the 2012 year in. 
which was corrected, as if Hawaii was considering moving their bid to the 2012 year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The only question is the chairman asked for people wishing to bid for Westercon 66. If they did, if they stood up, they they announced that they're bidding for that. What for the 2013 Westercon? Is that is there any other question regarding procedure? Is there any objection to taking up the statements in that order? All right. Uh, yes. Uh, wait till you've come to the microphone. Believe it or not, um, unless you're me or a couple of other people in here, they cannot hear you. Oh, I can probably pull it off. Uh, my question is, uh, if there is a motion on the floor, such as, uh, uh, you know, uh, are we going to select a particular committee, uh, is, uh, is it possible to make a motion to uh, uh, table that motion or something of that nature in order to allow discussion? Well, first of all, uh, the, as a, that's a parliamentary inquiry, it is, actually. There are no motions before us at this time. I understand. All right. Were there a motion to on the floor? Okay, you're asking hypotheticals, but... That's a question of procedure. Yeah, that's fine. If there happens to be a motion on the floor, for example, to select a given site, it is in order, generally speaking, to move to lay the motion on the table for the purpose of... Well, not right, to lay the motion on the table. Once the motion has been laid on the table, new motions may be made at that time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. By the way, the motion to lay on the table, I believe, only in us only needs a majority. This is Worldcon. This is not Worldcon. It is Westercon. Those of you with Worldcon experience, please be advised that our dialect, our procedural dialect, is a little bit different. Okay. Are there any other procedural questions? Over. Oh, good point. I said it before the meeting. I would like to re-remind members. I would like to re-remind members to think to silence their electronic buzzing devices. Mr. Veal. Mr. Chairman, what will be the consequences if no site receives a three-quarters majority if the motion to refer to the Hospice Board is defeated? It's an interesting question, uh, but the Chair has looked over the exact technical wording in the bylaws and believes that what happens is, should all of the things the member suggests happen, and this meeting still ends up adjourning without having selected the site, it is the same as having declared a deadlock and it becomes Hospice's problem. <laughs> By the way, the reason for that is the sentence in 316 that says, if the business meeting does not choose a site, then. Understood? Okay. Are there any further procedural questions? Thank you. Yeah, I never did get a, I, I, you interrupted every time I asked for it. You don't have to, by the way, when the chair asks if there's any objection, the way in which you would say that you don't object is to be quiet. <laughs> but the chair will take almost any sound or sound or movement to possibly be an objection. Is there any objection to following that procedure? A, a question? I'm assuming that everyone who had submitted a ballot in the site selection at this point will have a in Westercon 66. What about the people in this room as to how they're voting? Do they still need to pay or do something for this committee that will win at the end? The only people who have automatic memberships to Westercon 66 are those people who cast site selection ballots and pay the membership fee. Voting here in this room does not make you a member of Westercon 66. You will, if you did, unless you voted in the election and paid the fee, you will have uh, you you will have to cast your vote or join with the winning Westercon thereafter. Yes. like you can do just about anything you want at this point. Uh, members do not need to speak to turn around and face the chair. They need to actually look into the microphone and pull it about as far away as I'm holding mine. Please, thank you. Okay. I, I move that we suspend this meeting for an hour and reopen site selection and let people vote and somebody win. The uh, member's motion is not in order. The, the motion is not in order. It is not permitted under the Westercon bylaws. We have we do no, as a matter of fact, we have to follow our own bylaws, and section 3.16 is the governing section, which does not permit us to do what the member proposed. The motion is not in order. Are there any further procedural questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to listening to ballots. We will recognize first the Portland... Oh, by the way, because we are under the default, uh, member uh, potential bid statements are limited to 10 minutes maximum. I do hope you will not go quite that long, but we will basically take up statements from each... 
from each of the four groups, and then we will look at motions. Uh, we do not actually have exact business on the floor. We have statements from the four groups that have declared an interest. Uh, recognize the board. Members. I am Jim Armstrong, I'm the chairman, been chairman for Portland in 2013. Um, yeah, the members, okay, just a moment. Members should be advised. Do you, 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 you see how close to the mic I'm holding my, my, my mouth is? You need to be this close to the microphone. By right here. Like this. Okay. Um, we're. This is Kevin. Hold on, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we're looking at, I am kind of lost here because this is not normal. Um, but the Westercon bid in Oregon is still here and we're wanting to run the Westercon. We have a facility ready to go at a phone call. Um, we have a staff that are young, are available, able to run a convention. They are the ground hunters and the people that work the hardest at Oricon. Um, and right now we're just, I'm sorry Kevin, I, we came down here to run the Oricon, or to promote for a Westercon. This is what we want to do. Our people are passionate about this. I've had phone calls all night. I've been talking to the senior people, or to my advisors, which are all former and Westercon chairs. Um, you know, all I say is, you know, give us a shot because right now we're ready to go. You know, I can walk out the door and my hotel contract is signed by a phone call. Have we made mistakes? Yes. Has anybody else ever in the world, in the convention fandom, ever made mistakes? No, of course we don't. I mean, are we going to fix these mistakes and learn from the mistakes? Yes. Am I am I sat ready for you know if Kevin decides to call me at 2 a.m. I will get angry and go, Gene, you have a, a, the word "va" is misspelled on your website. Am I going to sit there and hang up on him? No. I'll call him a few choice words. <laughs> um, but I'll get it fixed. You know, I'll sit there and hang up on him and then email my webmaster, who is probably still awake at that time, to get the spelling correction done. Am I the type of person that has ran conventions before? I have 30 years of running conventions and going to conventions. Um, I feel that I've learned a lot from the, to me, are the best people, and that's people like Richard Wright, Sally Worley, Patty Wells, Mark Wells, um, Andrew Nesbitt, if you don't know him, it's a treat. Um, we know how to run a convention. We know what to do. We make mistakes here, correct it. I have no problem with anybody saying, you know, you're screwing up here, then I'll try to do what I can to fix it. You know, we came down here, and I've talked to some people, and I've had other people talk to people, and, you know, my vice chair, I have two vice chairs, one's in the hospital right now, with 17 broken bones in his feet, and when he takes a step, another two or three will break. My other vice chair just got out of the hospital on my way down because she has to have spinal taps every three months. I don't want that consideration. I don't want a pity vote. You know, if I wanted to get it deeper, my brother is in hospice. I'm here. That's our passion for Westercon. That's my passion for this Westercon. And to keep it going. Do I need people to kick me in the head? Yes. But I will note the point that the Oricon, and I have been here to help me, um, OSFCI at one point was a little low on funds. I co-chaired 
or even on 27 with her name is Cheryl. We refer to her as the coup. Um, and after everything was said and done and we paid our bills from this young group, which I have backing right now, this young group put $10,000 back into us at Seattle's coffers. That's after paying all our bills. I don't do anything small. I run a fur con in Seattle, Washington. I found it. We're the sixth largest fur con in the world in five years, which I've been told was not possible. I don't do things small, and I don't let anything slow me down. I was the programming director for AngloCon, which is the British Media Convention. I invited the Queen of England. I invited Tony Blair to our convention. Even after some of the staff go, you're nuts. Yes, I am. But at home, I have a letter from the Queen of England. Because they responded. And I have a letter from Tony Blair's office that they responded. I'm probably not the most normal chairman that the Western Continent has. But, like I've told Linda, I have a budget for 12, 1,200 people. I also have a budget for 600 people. I also have a budget for 2,500 people. The 2,500 people is, you know, what all chairmen wish for. The 600 is because I'm not stupid. The 1,200 is what I expect. So it's all up to you. Yes, this will be in English only. My name is Kevin Roach. Uh, many of you know me, but in discussions last night, we uh, heard a few things, some points we would like to clear up, because many of you know us as party guys. First of all, yes, the Olive Country bid started as a joke. We admit that freely. That's what it was. We were having lunch, and we saw a map. We did cost it a fruit for a world con, so we did a delicate thing for what they're called. However, we do not see Westercon as a joke. We love Westercon. We have seen problems in the bidding process. We've seen problems in the convention's focus, in particularly in its promotion. We have also observed that Seattle and San Jose both made, have made tremendous efforts to build groundwork and promote, and we want to build on that. For those of you who don't know our con running experience, uh, we have a lot of it. Uh, we developed the customer suite for Con Jose here in San Jose. Uh, we've run the masquerade at a number of events, including the Oscar in San Diego, uh, No More Down, Baycon, and uh, we are running it this year for renovation. We uh, created the masquerade halftime at the Glasgow World Con and kept 1,500 people in their seats while we watched people make costumes out of crap. We successfully bid for Andy Chair of the Bid, I Chair of the Commission, and won CostumeCon 26 held here in San Jose in 2008. CostumeCon 25 had 240 attendees. CostumeCon 27 had 450 attendees. Our CostumeCon had 900 attendees, the second largest costume con in its entire history. And the largest in 18 years. The largest in 18 years. Actually, still the largest. Uh, we have worked on, in the local fan community. We also have experience at convention running and event organization outside of fandom. Well, we actually, we don't just do costumes and we don't just do masquerades. Uh, at World Fantasy 2009, at World Fantasy 2009, we ran the hospitality suite. That's a very interesting and different world than a lot of the conventions you've attended if you've never been to a World Fantasy. Um, 
and we ran registration IT for Royal Fantasy 2009. Well, Kevin ran registration IT for Royal Fantasy 2009, uh, SmogCon 2010, this WesterCon. Um, and then, yeah, we, we have worked outside of Spanish events on conferences, events, and all of the back to um, I was a founding board president of SM Odyssey, a local uh, pansexual kink group. It was organized by four friends. They decided to step down and appoint a board. I was the founding president. I was also the person who developed their private registration and uh, content management system. Uh, so I understand infrastructure. Um, we organized their booth at the Folsom Street Fair. Uh, so we have some experience with crowds. Uh, on the professional side, I have also done a great deal of that organization. In particular, um, I organized the Spin Currents 2009 workshop and the Spin Age 2010 workshop for my, for my company, IBM. These are international conferences with uh, uh, members from 17 countries. And uh, IBM just had its centennial. I was actually the organizer, the stage manager, the coordinator for our local corporate events, which involved ranking politicians and by IBM vice presidents. We have experience in running events and running them well. Now, to the other problem with the All Up Country bid. Williams is not suitable for a Western Con. You can't get there. The only way to get to Williams is by car on I-5 in the nearest uh, airport is in Sacramento. We can't hold a Western Con in Williams. However, there are lots of places in the Sacramento Valley, including our state capital, which have facilities which are more than adequate to run a Western Con. And in fact, there have been two very successful Western Cons in Sacramento. Right now, we're running the Reno Mass Grave. So for six weeks, we have to focus on that. That's cards on the table, we aren't gonna lie. Uh, we do not have a hotel contract. We do have, I'm proud to say, a very good facility to be on. Uh, Mr. Dave Gallagher has volunteered to take that role. We have a, a uh, head for program. We have a head for hospitality. We are planning to hit the ground running. Uh, registration based on the, the corporate events I've been using, I have a registration solution which can be brought online in 48 hours if necessary. And uh, we also need some things. We promoted Costume Con as the Kevin Andy Roadshow, and we can't do that again. The Westercon zone is too large for us to cover it in two years and drum up the business. But we have a huge network of fans and friends across all of Western North America, and we will leverage that to the best promotion and marketing we can. We love Westercon, we want to rebuild it. Recognizes representative from Utah. I, I didn't catch who it was. Name. My name is Charles Galway from Salt Lake City, Utah, representing what was the bid for 2014 WesterCon, and we would be ready to do 2013, but that's not our first choice. We do feel like we have viable city and locations in Salt Lake City for Westercon 2013. We have about 30 plus years of experience at conventions like Conduit, which has been running for 21 years, Life and Mirrors and Everything, which is a literary academic convention in Provo. And we have Costume Con 23 that we held in Ogden, Utah, where people can bid at um, we have an excellent airport location, very close to Salt Lake City. Um, we have plenty of beverages, plenty of food in downtown Salt Lake City. We have excellent contacts through our 30 years of working with uh, authors and artists throughout Conduit and Life Universe and everything. We have um, 
fans who've been across uh, many lost cons, uh, quite a few world cons. David Glenn Anderson has traveled and worked with many con cons uh, of all sizes. I personally have been to a number of Western cons, Midwest conventions, uh, all sizes. And we have support from across the Midwest here. And um, I see people here from California. And we have support from Oregon, I know. We just talked to Spokane, Spokane last week. So thank you for considering our bid.
it actually is in order right now, and it would be or in order in between consideration of individual ones, uh, individual proposals, but not while any individual proposal is pending. Okay, yes, come up and certainly glad we pulled out that row of chairs. Okay, Andrew. Toby Schneider, my question is, can we please have a 20 minute question and answer period minimum, one minute per person, prior to any formal voting decisions on how many bids get how many votes? Well, not exactly, no, is the answer to the query here. Uh, but, but each of these is a separate question and it becomes, a, it's a debatable question. The first, and, and you can raise your questions at that time. You know. Uh, in my opinion, but unfortunately, it's not actually a question and answer session. I would like the opportunity. I would like the opportunity to ask questions of each bid on the table. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, the chair has ruled that it. The, the chair ruled that the person's that the member's uh, proposal is not in, in, in order, but you're, to, 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 you want to overrule and establish a new order. A new I, order I do not want to establish a new order, but I do have questions for all four contenders. All right, uh, Mr. What, for what purpose does the member rise, Mr. Slade? I request a tentative recess for the purpose of caucus. Uh, motion to recess, which is not debatable, is in order at this time. Oh, actually, there was no motion on the floor. It's a debatable recess. No, wait. Okay. Motion to recess is in order. Is there a second to the motion to recess? Second. Okay. All those in favor of, of, of having a, ten, a recess of 10 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Uh, the chair believes the affirmative has it. Uh, the, chair, the affirmative has it. This meeting is in recess until, let's see, it's 12.23. Let's make it 12.35 until 12.35. The meeting is once again in order. The chair recognizes Mr. Yellow. Based on the request uh, by a significant number of members that we be able to uh, have a question and answer period, I move that this body go into committee of the whole for a time not to exceed 30 minutes. Uh, and for the purpose of discussing the bid. The, uh, the for the purpose of discussing the bid. Is there a second to the motion to go into the Second. This is not a debatable motion. The question is on going into committee of the whole for a period not to exceed 30 minutes for the purpose of uh, informally discussing uh, bids. All those in favor of going into committee of the whole for this purpose, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it, and we are at uh, 1236, Madam Secretary. At 1236, we are going into Committee of the Whole. The Chair appoints Mr. Gallo as Chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Members are advised at this point that the meeting is no, no longer in formal recorded session. Um, the actual recording of this session is going to, will show a gap at this point in there as we come out. You are in a committee. Committee rules apply. Mr. Gallo is presiding. It is 1.11, and the committee having risen and produced, the committee of the whole has risen and I understand has no report. This now leaves us at the point where we were when we went into committee of the whole, which was to begin considering the bids in the reverse order of their original presentation. Each of these questions will be, require a three quarters vote. Each of them is a separate question, and each of them is separately debatable. That is to say, once the motion is on the floor to select and name the site in question, the question, your, the debate will be in, in favor of adopting that site or opposed to adopting that site. Once debate is ended, we'll vote on that question. 
Uh, barring any further, uh, uh, did you want to speak to this? Um, yes, you said, you said site in question. I believe it's committee in it question. It is committee in question. I'm apt to use shorthand to mean site slash committee. We will probably refer to them by their site names, but do bear in mind that you are actually voting on a committee that is promising a particular site, but is actually only committed to holding a site somewhere in Western North America or Hawaii. Do you bear that in mind? If they have a carte blanche. Mechanism on voting, because a three-quarters vote is required, I do want to make it absolutely clear. It is a three-quarters vote of those people who actually vote at the time we call for the vote. It is not three-quarters of the people in this room. It is not three-quarters of the people who signed the sign-up list, or three-quarters of the people who you happen to know are up in the dealer's room, or any of those numbers. Basically, if three times as many people vote in favor of a site as vote against it, that site is selected. And if not, it is not selected. On these questions, the chair will first attempt to shoot, use a show of hands to see if it is patently obvious that it is one way or the other. If there's any doubt, or if the members vote for division, call for division, uh, the chair intends to use the method of serpentine voting. Uh, in such a case, the chair would then call for those people in favor of adopting that site to stand, or equivalents, and we would begin counting off at one end of one row, going back and forth, going one, two, three, four, and as you vote, and count your name, you set down. Uh, to, to save confusion, I think it would be best if I start, if we do a serpentine vote, I start with the core down here, then to my left, then to my right, always starting at the front and moving to the back. Is there any question of what I have just described? Anyone have a question regarding that mechanism? <coughs> Are there any people wishing to be, uh, yes, I think Mr. Golomchuk has a motion, or at least a statement on this. I would actually move to go back to the original order of voting on Portland first, and um, the, the committee of Andy Kevin second, and uh, Salt Lake third, and Hawaii last. Second. Uh, Point of order. The member has moved to re to re-reverse the order back to the way it was. Uh, second. Yeah. Two thirds vote then, or do I have to reconsider the first one? No, it's not available. I'm asking a parliamentary question of somebody who knows a lot of it. Mr. Mr. Yell, reconsider. It would reconsider. Uh, did Mr. Mr. Kowalczyk, did you vote in favor of the motion to reverse the order in the first place? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, the member has moved to reconsider the vote on ordering the vote, on ordering the selection order. Is there a second to reconsidering the vote? Second. All right. I want to make it very clear. All that we are about to vote on is whether to go back and ask the question earlier that we decided. That's all we're going to do, which was the order in the vote. We're not, this vote does not actually reorder it. It is, shall we go back and vote again on the order? It's not available because the underlying question was not available. The majority being necessary to reconsider the vote. All those who wish to reconsider the vote on the order of consideration of the sites, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? That's close. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to tell you a counted vote. Hands down. And uh, because it is that close, we are going to have to do a serpentine vote. Once again, all of those people who think we should reconsider the original vote and go back to the and, and go back and consider the order of voting. Well, that's all we're doing is the reconsideration. All those who think we should reconsider the vote. Please stand if you are able. Those of you who can't, uh, what may indicate in some other way. Oh, yeah, all right. uh, hmm, maybe actually I should go ahead and start on the left, center, right, so that I keep it straight, okay? Let us start on the, my left, your right, front row, and go ahead and start with your pole. And then sit down, and the next row begin to count. Two and three. Four. Five. Okay, we'll start at the first row here. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. In the next row. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Hold it, hold it, hold please. Uh, hold, go ahead. We were at twenty-four, guys. That was twenty-four when you sat down. It is serpentine back and forth both ways. Okay, 24, the next person here. 25. 26. 
There is, if there is objection and the answer is no, then you may not, once you have made your motion and it is seconded on the floor, you're not allowed to withdraw without the permission of the body. The question is on reversing the order and starting with the why. A two, that, if there are members attempting to get the chair's attention, they have to stand. I am not going to take the yes, Ms. Gold. Okay. Just as a point of information, voting against this motion would cause Portland to be first. Correct. Thank you. If the motion is defeated, Portland goes first. If the motion passes and a two-thirds vote is necessary to do so, Hawaii goes first. Are there any other people with questions about the effect of this vote? All those who believe that Portland should go first, a two-thirds vote be, I mean, did, see, now you've got me doing it. All those who believe that Hawaii should go first, a two-thirds vote being necessary to do so, raise your hands. Hands down. Those who think Portland should continue go first, raise your hands. Hands down. The, the uh, uh, negative has it, two-thirds vote not being obtained. We go back to the very original order of consideration of the motions, which is voting on Portland first. Now, uh, Mr. Glazer. There is a motion regarding the polls. That Mr. Mr. Glazer has moved that the vote on this be taken by ballot rather than by serpentine vote. No, no, let me finish. Uh, <laughs> is that a debatable? Is motions relating to the polls debatable? I have to, I may have to look it up. The chair does not believe motions relating to the polls are debatable, but it only takes a majority to do the order. All those, I did hear it, I heard at least one second out there. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is, a, what, for what purpose does the member rise? Procedural, do we have the ability to actually do it? Should we vote on it? Yes, we have paper. Thank you. <laughs> However, the chair would like to thank the uh, thank the members who were foreshadowing the voting motion for letting us know so that I was able to send the search to the cards out to get paper during the recess. <laughs> uh, for what purpose does the member rise, Mr. Hertz? I didn't hear. Pardon me. I didn't hear whether this is debatable. Uh, no, it is. Uh, the chair ruled. Uh, I I could be wrong, but the chair has ruled that it's not a debatable question. So I won't enter. Mr. Lenneman, for what purpose does the member rise? Procedural. Does this mean there would be four? And presumably, the first vote doesn't. Try again. Assuming Portland goes first, and Portland does not achieve a three-quarters majority, we would then vote on the next one in the queue, and the next. Yes. It would be four separate votes, possibly. There are up to four separate votes involved here, and this, I believe, is I'm actually treating this as question only on the first a, a, a ballot on the first one. If you wanted to vote by ballot on the first few other ones, you're going to have to move it separately again. I'm sorry, you had a question. I apologize. So we are allowed to vote yes on more than one. Should the first one that we vote yes on? That is correct. I want to, let me, I, I, I the, although it's technically not correct because there's a pending motion on balloting, I really think I need to explain this. Many of you have never been to one of our business meetings before. We, we are, I'm sorry, I apologize. They aren't normally this complicated, honestly. We are not voting on a multiple choice election where there are four choices, A, B, C, and D. We are voting on a series of four yes-no questions. The questions will be, in order, shall Portland be selected? Shall the Olive Country bid be selected? Shall the Utah bid be selected? Shall the Hawaii bid be selected? Each of those is a completely separate and independent question. Each of them has a yes-no answer. Those are the only choices. You can vote yes or you can vote no. If you don't vote, you don't count. If you want to vote for one of the ones further down the line, you must vote against anything in front of it because if anybody gets the necessary three-fourths vote when that yes-no comes up, they win and that's the end. No further votes will be considered. Does that answer the member's question? Thank you, I apologize. Yes, Mr. Von Thorne. Are these, uh, this is a parliamentary inquiry? Yes. Thank you. Are these votes debatable motions? Each of the votes is a debatable question, yes. And they have, boy, they have a lot of the date time available on them if they needed to. Sorry, Ms. Gold. What happens if nobody, you know, as I understand, a yes has to be a three-quarters majority yes? That is correct. Three-quarters, I'm sorry, pardon me, I must repeat it. Uh, a three-fourths vote is necessary to select a site, yes. Uh, let me, well, no, 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 actually, that's a, it is a good question, all right? The question is, what if all four of these votes fail, if all four sides fail? Well, motions to declare a deadlock require only a majority, and by the way, they're in order now and in between each, the individual, 
ones as well and can be renewed. You could, there could be a proposal for yet another site. It could be taken up as a fresh question, also requiring a three-fourths vote. Or anybody who voted against one of the bids up the line could move to reconsider that vote and go back and try it again. Does that answer the member's question? Yes. The question actually on the floor and I, uh, is, shall the vote on Portland uh, be taken by secret ballot, by, you know, by written ballot? A majority being necessary to order a ballot. All those in favor of ordering a ballot on the Portland side, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the negative has it, the motion fails. The question will be, when we vote on it, barring any other changes, will be taken by serpentine vote, I think. I'll probably do a show of hands first, but it'll probably be taken by serpentine. I believe the question on the floor is, shall the Portland bid, as presented earlier, be selected? This is a debatable question. Uh, members have, can speak up to twice, but, for, but may not speak a second time on the question until everybody else who wants to speak um, has had a chance. Technically, you have up to 10 minutes for speech. The chair would ask members to show a little bit of restraint. <laughs> Good luck with that. Who, uh, yes? I move to close debate and vote. <laughs> mm, oh, I, it's, a, it's legitimate here. I just have to look at the, yeah. It's previous. It's previous that's a motion technically for the previous question. I just want to remember the mechanism of, of there's something involved there. Okay. Before proceeding, that's a motion to close the debate and vote on that issue immediately before us. For what purpose does the member rise? I have a second for it. I, got, I know the rule on there. Okay, I'm going to read it, but I have a, for what purpose does the member rise? Parliamentary inquiry. Yeah. What, uh, Mr. Dash, I'll wait till I wait. Yeah, wait till I finish stating this. Under our rules, before proceeding to take a vote on the previous question, the presiding officer shall ask for a show of hands on how many people will still wish to speak to the question. That is not a vote on the previous question. It's merely saying who wants to speak one way or the other on such the question. Is that what you were going to ask? I was asking if that was part of the Bible. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's standing. It's standing rule one on page fifty-five. Hang on a second. I know, let me count this one and then we don't get it. All right. All those in favor of, of ending the, oh, I'm sorry, I got it next. Who wishes to speak to the question of selecting Portland? Just show your hands, show hands. Hands down, that is not debate. All right, on the question of closing the debate and immediately voting on the Portland question, a two-thirds vote being necessary to close debate. Please, all those wishing to close the debate, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, there being two-thirds in the affirmative, the question is closed. Just a moment here, the, the, the secretary has run out of battery power in just a minute here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, meaning, meaning we'll return, return to four. The question is on selecting Portland as the site of Westercon 66, a three-fourths vote being necessary. I'm going to first try a show of hands. All those who believe we should select Portland as the site of WesternCon 66, please raise your hand. Portland, all those people with the site conversations, take them out of the room, please. All those in favor of Portland, hands, and hands down. Those opposed, hands down. There is manifestly less than three quarters in favor of this. And the motion fails. Is there anyone wishing to make a deadlock motion? I don't, I mean, I'm not asking for just, just for the show for the sake of it, you have to mean it. Thank you. Next is the California Olive Country bid. The question before the meeting is, shall we select the Olive Country bid um, as for the site of WesterCon 66? This is a debatable question. Is there any wish to, okay. I'm up to close the meeting. Second. 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 Who wish, uh, an informal show of hands, who wishes to speak one way or the other on this question? Hands down. All, who, uh, uh, is, there any, uh, is there any real objection to closing the debate, having seen that? None here, none heard this. Yes. Okay. There, okay. All right. All those in favor of closing the debate on the question of the Olive Country bid, a two-thirds vote being necessary, raise hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. There being more than two-thirds in the affirmative, the affirmative has it. The debate on this question is closed. A three-fourths vote being necessary to select this site. All those in favor of the Olive Country bid, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? It's a little tough because of meeting three to one. The chair will ask for a serpentine vote. Hands down on that. All those in favor of the Olive Country bid, please rise. Yes. Let's start here. Four. Five. Eleven and then twelve, 
Uh, is there a second? Second. <clears throat> this is a debatable motion and requires a uh, only a majority to pass. Uh, yes, good night. Uh, question about the point of order. Yep. And at this point, uh, a motion be made to reconsider a vote overriding that. No. I'm sorry. I mean, okay. overriding a deadlock? That motion to reconsideration can be made after we've resolved after we resolve the deadlock question. But not before. But not before it because it doesn't take precedence. I don't think it does at least. No, because it's not a yeah. Yeah, you can only make recon generally speaking, you can only make reconsider when there's nothing pending. Alright, on the question of shall we declare a deadlock, who are the members wishing to raise procedural questions before proceeding to debate? Yes. Yes. For what purpose does the member rise? The member has asked for a recount on the previous motion. Um, no, I, I, we, I, now that we've actually moved on to a new motion. Well, sure in order. Yeah, so the motion's not in order. One, that, I, yeah, you could have jumped me really quickly there, but I, could, I'm gonna, I'm moving on on that. So, all right. A, a majority being necessary. For what purpose is the member a uh, re Okay, uh, I see. Procedure. Okay. <laughs> The question is on yes. For what purpose does the member rise? Uh, I wish to ask a question on what happens on a yes or no vote. All right. Uh, if we uh, vote no on a deadlock and then continue uh, to two more votes and those votes fail, does the question then carry over to a selection meeting? Or? No. Um, the motion to declare a deadlock is renewable, which is to say, once we just let us let us say suggest if the motion to declare a deadlock fails. Then we would move on to considering the next bit up the line or any other business. Um, after that is dealt with, a motion to declare a deadlock would be in order again. And it would continue to be in order every time more progress has been made forward in the debate. If this meeting ends up adjourning, whether we declare a deadlock or not, if this meeting ends up adjourning without picking a site, then we've defaulted on our responsibility and, and lost us gets it. For what purpose does the member rise? Yes, Re votes on the previous votes on the ones that we set aside could be reconsidered at that time. Yes, for what purpose the member rise? I would like to know whether it is possible to exclude from reconsideration uh, any votes in which a threshold is not passed. Say half of say, say half of the voters. In other words, if it doesn't get half the vote, Te the technically it. yes, but the chair discourages it. Okay. I mean, the motion to reconsider is because it, it would. I, I don't think the motion. Well, okay. Let, let, could we try and get to the deadlock motion, people? <laughs> Eight or nine minutes discussion of procedural issues, and if there is a motion on the floor that we declare a deadlock. Uh, all right. Uh, for what purpose, Mr. Mr. Garcia? For what purpose does the member rise? He asked for he, he's moved for a recess. It's an undebatable. Is there a second to the motion to recess? No. The member members would please restrain themselves. Okay. No. The House will be in order. On the question of holding a recess, and the Chair declares it would be a 10-minute recess, a majority being necessary to have a recess. All those in favor of recessing at this time, this not being a debatable question, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the negative has it. The motion to recess fails. The question is on the motion to declare a deadlock. The person who made the speech in favor, who moved for a deadlock, has preference to speak in favor of the motion. Who made the motion for deadlock? No. No, no, no. Who made the motion for the deadlock? I lost track. Back here. You, did you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Before a motion to, to close debate, do you wish to speak on in favor of declaring a deadlock? You want to move to close debate? Is there a motion? Okay. Is there a second to a second. Second close debate? All right. I, before before we vote on closing the debate, I'd like a show of hands. Who would like to speak in favor or opposed to uh, close uh, declaring a deadlock? Anyone wish to speak on that? Hands down. All right. All those in favor of closing the debate on the immediately pending question of declaring a deadlock. Two thirds being necessary. Raise your hands. Two thirds to close the debate. Hands hands up. And. 
Okay, hands down. Those opposed to closing today, hands down. The chair believes there is less than two thirds, or there's less than two thirds. There being less than two thirds, the motion for the previous question fails. Does the member wish to speak in favor of his own motion? Okay, I will take I will take any speaker who wishes to speak in favor of, of declaring a deadlock. And at this point, I want the speakers to come up front and use the microphone. Mr. Beal. Mr. Chairman, I am not speaking merely because I have a board record of speaking of the losing side in business meetings. <laughs> I wish to see whether it will be extended. Uh, it seems to be quite clear from the votes that we have taken that there is a great deal of sentiment in favor of the olive country vote. Uh, the one reservation that I had, uh, and which cannot be resolved, right now is whether the committee will be able to secure facilities for it. And it seems to be that the way to determine whether they can secure facilities for them, give them time to do it, is to declare a deadlock, pass this matter up to the Lospice Board. Uh, in the interval, uh, Messrs. Roach and Trumbull either will or will not be able to secure facilities. If they can, it's clear that there is a great deal of sentiment about the membership for awarding the convention to them, and I imagine that the Lospice Board will take cognizance of that. And of course, if they can't, then of course they they can't, and the, the board will be able at that point to consider uh, what can be done about the remaining options. But since we can't this afternoon resolve the important uh, threshold question of whether, of whether the committee can secure facilities, it seems to me that the most expedient course of action is in fact to deadlock and leave this matter to the board. Thank you. Speaker opposed to declaring a deadlock. Ooh, let me see. I think. Yeah, it's hard to say. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. That's a good point. Given that you're the only Wasis board member present. Something of a best of Please, <laughs> the board would prefer that this be resolved here. We appreciate the situation, uh, and we will make a decision if it comes to us, but we would like you to all try to resolve it here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a speech in favor of declaring a deadlock? Uh, speaking opposed. I only want to, we alternate, yes, we go one side and the other. Speaker in favor of declaring a deadlock, anyone? Speaker opposed to declaring a deadlock, Mr. Kowalczyk. Based on what's been being said on SMOPs and other mailing lists, and the lack of lossless people here, it seems that lossless really doesn't care about this, and I'm afraid if this goes to lossless board, they could just decide to kill Western Con. Uh, it's clear, it seems from what's going on here, the WASPIS really doesn't care very much about West, Western Con. I really think it's coming upon us to come to a decision here. And to Mr. Veal's point, uh, if we were to figure out how... For what to, purpose does the member rise? Is the member trying to engage in a point of order or, re, or point out a breach of the rules? Uh, actually, just pointing out the WASPIS members that are that, here. Discussing, discussing matters of fact or opinion are not points of order. Correcting another member's errors, perceived or otherwise, is not in order. Mr. Kowalczyk, you may continue. Uh, to Mr. Deal's point, uh, if we can figure out some way to give this to the committee of Granzilla and they're unable to come up with the venue, then it would go to the losses board. So I contend that giving this to, to a, a group now, even if they can't come up with the facility, is better than letting this go to the losses board to begin with. In favor of declaring a deadlock, Mr. Vogt. Yeah. I find myself surprised to be up here speaking in favor of declaring a deadlock. But um, for what purpose does the member rise? Thank you. Thank you. I think we should declare a deadlock and give them the six weeks. We're supposed to be talking about committees, not locations anyway. There's a lot of locations in the western United States that this can be held at. 
code. You're opposed to a debt log. Yes. Okay, yes, go ahead. Yeah. You're going to need to give one of the, those of you who've been speaking, you better talk to them. And I am opposed to a deadlock. Terry, 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 Terry Terman. Terman, thank you. Okay, I'm opposed to the deadlock. And I notice one thing. Um, there is a requirement on voting that people be a member of Westercon, and I don't see that that was kind of informally dealt with. We assume people were voting were members, but uh, would be in order to have a re-vote in which you I, prove that you were a member of Westercon in voting. The, the, as opposed to a revote, the member is attempting to propose that the sergeant's arms verify the credentials of every member present in the room. Is that the, is that your desire? Of every member who votes? No, no, every member present in this room. If you, I'm not going to do it. It's too oh, hard to do it as you're individually okay. voting. If you want the, okay. if you want me to declare a credential stretch this time, I'll put it to a vote. Is that what you're asking? Okay, I'll ask that. Is there a second to the motion to order the credentials of the members be checked? I'll second. Uh, this is a non-debatable motion. All those in favor of ordering the sergeants in arms to verify the credentials of the members present in the room, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The negative has it. The, the motion fails. Okay. Uh, that was uh, in favor. Was that with I forgot. Opposed to a deadlock. I've lost. Well, I, I had to work my way down the stack. Uh, in favor of declaring a deadlock? Anyone? Yes. Uh, okay. Is there a second of the motion to close the debate? Uh, show informal show of hands. Who else wishes to speak on the question of declaring deadlock? Just show it in, in any way at all. And so, for what purpose the member rise? Were you just trying to show you wanted to speak on it? Okay. Uh, inform, I was asking for informal show of hands. Did you want to speak at all? I'm not going to recognize you. Just want to count. Who wants to still speak on the deadlock question? Show of hands. Hands down. A two-thirds vote being necessary to close the debate. All those in favor of closing the debate on the deadlock motion, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, there being more than two-thirds in the affirmative, the question is called, the motion to the debate is ended, and the question is on declaring a deadlock. A majority being necessary, and I mean a majority of those people voting, a majority of the uh, being necessary to declare a deadlock, all those in favor of declaring that the Westercon business meeting is deadlocked and referring this question to the Westercon 66 site selection to the Las Vegas Board of Directors. Please raise your hands. I know it's probably going to go to count, but hands down. Those opposed? All oh, hands down. The negative has it. The motion to declare deadlock fails. Oh, dear. That, that's okay. The sergeants of arms are on it. Thank you. Uh, for what purpose does the member rise? Can you please explain the option to let the time of Mr. Chairman? I know. I know. The immediately pending question that is about to come before us is, shall the Salt Lake City bid be selected and a three-fourths vote would be necessary to select them? Once that is dealt with, I will ask, uh, is there a reason you want to interrupt the chair or do you want me to answer the member's question first? Then please sit down. Thank you. Um, once that has been dealt with, a deadlock motion would be in order again. It doesn't have to be made, but it would be in order. Uh, assuming it fails, assuming Salt Lake fails. Um, once that is dealt with, the Hawaii bid would be in order and requires a three-fourths vote. Assuming it fails, we will have exhausted all of the bids that we know of and the members. <laughs> a deadlock motion would be in order again. And if that fails, the chair believes it would be a, that would be a point where people who voted on the earlier to move to reconsider earlier votes. Mr. Gallo. Uh, Go ahead and stand up. Try it, Chair. You, you know how you know. You did work. Uh, I know... Uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that at any point after we have dealt with the Hawaii committee, that any additional person could propose. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Yao was correct. New bids could be entertained at that point under the same conditions as the other ones. Okay. All right. Now, you, you, I'm going to do that. You had it. You had it. I want to ask what, what is the for what purposes the member rise basically. Yeah. I have, there is no motion on the floor at this time. I wish to introduce a motion. 
For what's the motion? Uh, I wish to move that uh, we uh, suspend the ordinary rules and instead of the uh, procedure of three quarters uh, uh, debate, I wish uh, to uh, suspend the, uh, the rules and uh, instead have a preferential vote uh, among all of the uh, four candidate bids here. The chair rules the motion should not win. The, 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 mo the mo member has moved to, susp to suspend the rules and institute a preferential ballot. The chair believes this is not, a, this is not consistent with section 316 of the bylaws and rules accordingly, that you cannot suspend your own bylaws. Does anyone wish to appeal that ruling? The motion is not, with the, the motion is not in order. Are there other procedural interventions at this point, Mr. Kowalczyk? There is no motion on the floor at this time. I have, no, I have another procedural question that maybe would get us back to where I think some of us want to be, which is rather than moving to reconsider one of the votes, is it merely possible once we get to a suitable point for someone just to move to overturn the ruling of the chair and to uh, reintroduce the uh, a motion uh, that's ready to vote on? It takes the same, it takes more votes to do that than to reconsider. <laughs> Kowalczyk, do you really want to go there? <laughs> We're there, right? No, no, you're the one, you're, you're trying to dive into the sub-basement of the rabbit hole. <laughs> Alright. The chair would like to try and get to the floor of the question on Utah, but members are trying to continue to introduce procedural questions. For what purpose does the member rise? Yes. Move recess for meal break. Does the member have a length of time in mind? The chair, the, is there a second to the motion to recess for 30 second. minutes? All those in favor of recessing, a majority being necessary, raise your hands. Hands, hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The motion to recess fails. For what purpose does the member rise? Yes, go ahead. Um, many of us who are here, and this is very important, us are also panelists, and we are having to choose to be here instead of being on panels. We're going to hit the 230 panel. Now the members today, the members are dating. The member is dating. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 the chair is sympathetic, but we that's okay. Mr. Chairman, order yeah. the day. Yes, thank you. The member call orders of the day are called for. The mem the next the question on the floor at this time now is shall the Utah bid be selected? Is there that this is a debatable question? I, before proceeding to take a vote on that, I'd like just an informal show of hands. Who wants to speak about the Utah bid in any way? Raise hand. Hands down. A two-thirds vote being necessary to close the debate. All those in favor of ending the debate and proceeding to a vote on the Utah bid, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. A two-thirds vote being necessary. The affirmative has it. The debate is closed. A three-fourths vote being necessary to elect Utah as the site of WesterCon 66. Let's try a show of hands. All those in favor of Utah, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, there is definitely less than three-quarters in the affirmative. The motion to elect Utah fails. The order, well, it, for what purpose does the member rise? Are you moving a deadlock motion? I am. Yes. The, <clears throat> Uh, yes. Is there a second to a the motion to, de to declare a deadlock? It's debatable. You, would, you can speak to it if you want. Move uh, The member who spoke to, who raised it gets... Thank you. <clears throat> There's a second. Who wants to... Who, by show of hands, who would want to discuss whether we're deadlocked or not? Any show of hands? Okay. All those in favor of closing the debate on the deadlock motion, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the, the, the affirmative has it. The debate is closed. On the motion to declare a deadlock, a majority being necessary. All those in favor of us declaring a deadlock, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. The negative has it. A deadlock is not declared. The question on the floor is selecting the Hawaii bid. This is debatable. The <laughs> is it by show of hands? Who wants to debate the Hawaii question? Hands down. Those in favor of ending the debate on the Hawaii motion, hands. Hands down. Those opposed? 
Hands down, the debate is closed. A three-fourths vote being necessary. A three-fourths vote being necessary. All those in favor of electing Hawaii as WesterCon 66, uh, raise your hand. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the, ne the negative has it. Hawaii is not selected. We have exhausted all the bids. Is there another deadlock motion? Yes. Deadlock? No. Did you move a dead? Thank you. Is there a second to reconsider it? Okay. That's all right. That's all right. I, I, <clears throat> the question is, shall we reconsider the all of the vote, country vote? Okay, it was seconded. All right. It, it, believe it or not, it's debatable. Let me explain the effect of it here. When we vote on this, we are not voting on whether to select the all of country bid. We are merely saying we are prepared to go back and discuss it again without making a decision at this time. Is there any person, anybody here who doesn't understand what I just said? Thank you. The question on whether to reconsider is itself debatable because the underlying question is debatable. Okay. Did the maker, the person making the motion was to speak on it, on, on whether we should reconsider it? Uh, no, Mr. Thank you. Who wishes to speak merely on the question of reconsideration? And just show of hands. Hands down. Those in favor of ending the debate on the motion to reconsider, raise your hands. Two thirds vote necessary. Hands down. All those opposed to ending the debate on that, hands down. Two thirds being in favor, the debate is closed and the motion to reconsider is called. A majority being necessary to reconsider the original vote on the Olive Country bid. If you want to go back and reopen the Olive Country bid, raise your hands. Hands down. If you don't think we should reopen the Olive question, hands up. Hands down. There is a majority in the affirmative. The motion on the Olive Country bid is to be considered. Now, before we proceed on that question, the chair wishes to explain a little bit more about reconsideration. You may reconsider a motion once. You can re you have re you have used your one reconsideration of the motion to, to elect the Olive Country bid as Westercon 66. Should this motion fail, it, it is not accessible to this meeting any further. In, one question. Yes? You have to be sufficiently new that the members could tolerate it as a new motion. <laughs> question in the back, is that a, for what purpose does the member rise? I'm sorry, you I have a question about the reconsideration of yes. the impact. If we can if we reconsider We are we have reconsidered. I'm sorry, if we vote and it fails again, would last us Board be able to consider that side or not? Yes, the Blossom's Board has not bound by any of the actions of this meeting. They can pick any side we consider, any other side we consider. It doesn't matter what we did. They can pick anybody as long as they're in the region. Okay. In the back, yes. Ma if we Quiet, please. We are reconsidering. If the all countries voted positively, can it then be reconsidered again? No, because no, no. No. No, we, we've already reconsidered it once. Yeah, you've used up your reconsideration. You get one. You only get one reconsideration on the main motion. <laughs> Mr. Von Korn? I'm sorry? Committee, yes. Anybody can bid for anywhere. Anybody can bid for anywhere. I am using all the country as shorthand for the committee that would be chaired by Kevin... Uh, Roche and Andy Trimbley, but it is not bound to a specific location. They are simply saying, we promise to hold a WesterCon somewhere in Western North America or, uh, or Hawaii. Uh, next. Uh, there, it is, if enough time has gone by, there's been an ask the credentials the members be checked. Is there a second to that motion? All those in favor of ordering a credentials check at this time, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the negative has it, the motion fails. Ms. Gold. Informational thing. Shh. Quiet, please. I, the chair can't, Lynn, you're going to have to come up front of me. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. Shh. 
I know, I know you are a professional announcer, honestly, but... That's fine. <coughs> I also know how to use a microphone. Hello. <laughs> okay, if we vote and there is not a three... Does that have to be a three-quarter majority? Yes. yes. Is there any way to somehow amend the rules so it's a simple majority? No. We so have no No, no, no. Okay, okay thank you. You can't, sorry, you cannot suspend your own bylaws at this time, no matter how much you may want to do so. For what purpose does the member rise? A question yes. of, of information. Did the bylaws not state that you do not have to have a hotel contract at this time to be considered a viable committee? Okay, that is correct. Uh, the, chair, the, the chair has, there is now been enough that I'm going to have to read you section 316 again. I know it's, it's been over two hours since you heard it once. <laughs> Should no eligible bid gain the needed majority, well, a three-fourths majority of the site selection business meeting may award the Westercon to any bid. A site chosen under the provisions of this section shall not be restricted by any portion of this article, except this section, and section 3.1, which says Western North America. There are no restrictions other than we're voting on a couple of people here to say they're going to hold WesterCon wherever they wish to do so. You're, you're voting to trust them. Are there any further procedural questions about what we have in front of us, please? Yes, for what purpose the member rise? I know, folks, it's hot. Give every member of this meeting the same courtesy in addressing the members as you would wish to receive yourself. The members ask, basically, could we lay this on the table and take up a constitutional bylaws amendment to change everything around? The answer is no, because it takes two years to pass a bylaw then. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a legitimate question, folks. Remember, not everybody's been to all of these. For what purpose does the member rise? Uh, uh, question. question. No, that question has already been asked. If the, if their bid wins, it cannot be reconsidered. <laughs> Oh, they don't win. I'm sorry. This is why I can't. if it doesn't win, we could we could reconsider one of the other votes as well, or we could take up new uh, new bids. For what purpose does the member rise? Uh, I was asked a question. Yes. May we continue with the vote? <laughs> the answer is yes. If you would stop raising procedural questions. <laughs> We didn't close the date on that, it's still open, I recall. The question is on selecting the Olive Country bid. It is back to forest, it's debate time starts all over again, and it's correctly debatable. I move we close the debate. Uh, the chair has not recognized anybody. Somebody wanted to? Yes. Move to close the debate? Move to close the debate. Is there a second? Second! Who wishes to speak before I take a vote on the closing of the debate? Who would like to discuss the Olive Country bid? Show a show of hands. Hands down. A two-thirds vote being necessary to close the debate on the all of country bid. All those who wish to close the debate, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down. There are less than two-thirds in the affirmative. The motion to close the debate fails. The question is debatable and is on selecting the all of country bid. A speaker in favor of all of country, and the chair would recognize in preference the leaders of the bid if they want to speak first. Okay? Who wishes to speak in favor of the motion? for the Olive Country Bill. Anybody? Mr. Gallo. And now we're back to getting back up to the microphone, please. I believe we came very close to selecting the Olive Country bid. I believe that some people had reservations, and after further consideration, uh, clearly at least some of them have changed their minds. It seems clear that the overwhelming desire of this body is that these two gentlemen be given a chance to produce a really great WesterCon. 
Uh, and I, for one, feel very confident that they will, and therefore, should they continue to desire to do so, then I think that this body should give them that chance. Speaker against the motion to select all of country, Mr. Von Thorne. And uh, I believe, actually, I, I apologize here, but I believe we may have a speaker against who's in a mobility device. Yes. Is it possible for you to come down to the floor? Please make, please make the path. There should be a path clear there. We, can you please make the path clear and, and, and adjust the ramp? We do want to accommodate everyone. Thank you. This is Von Thorne. Okay. Uh, I'll try to be quick. Uh, I would love to go to Sacramento or wherever. Or, or wherever. To, to see uh, a Westercon that uh, Kevin and Andy run. Uh, the question that I have is whether uh, 2013 is the right year. Uh, what has happened is uh, Gene and his group have come forth with a good faith bid and they've worked hard on it. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is that uh, Portland fandom is very unhappy with, with this sequence of events. And if we vote against them now, they may not want to bid again for quite a long time. Uh, my perspective uh, is I try to encourage people to get involved in fandom. So I have spoken to Kira and Jamie in Boise, and I've spoken to Chris in Spokane, and I've spoken to Bob in, in uh, Missoula, Montana, and I want to bring Western to these places. The problem that I see today is I cannot now encourage anyone to bid in good faith because you know people can like to work on it, and then in the last minute some joke bid comes along and you know, just upends the whole process. My concern is, you know, are there going to be bids in the future after after this meeting? Good. Speaker in favor of the all of country bid, Ms. Childress. Those of you who know me, I have been a part of many bids, whether they've been Westercon or Worldcon. I work on several committees since 2000, and I have worked for Kevin and Andy on Costume Con and the Con Suite Mistress. As someone who has been challenged in areas, I have done a lot of promotion. Um, I've traveled a lot to support other organizations. I am sorry that I didn't see much from Portland uh, prior to this weekend. But I certainly saw a lot from Kevin and Andy when they were campaigning for Costume Con and in the last three weeks for this. And I really think we need to give them a chance to inject the life that we need back in Westerville. Speech in opposition. And uh, Eric, help with mine. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are bids, there are real bids, and then there are joke bids. And joke bids should never, ever, ever, ever be considered to be real bids. Never. I, if they suck away votes from real bids, what they are is malicious. And that's a real uh, thing. Member, member I don't think, no, no, sorry, the member will retrain, ret restrain himself from making a personal comments toward the toward individuals. <laughs> okay, well, I'm saying the process. Yeah, 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 the, member will, the, you, the member can address the process, but uh, should not stray away from the question of whether we are selecting this particular site and should restrain themselves from potentially personally insulting comments. Okay, well, I think that given the fact that it was a joke did, nobody, nobody, everybody who voted for it should be ashamed of themselves. No, the chair rules, no, no, actually, the chair, no, the chair rules the, the points of the yells for more perversion. It is, that, that to me, the chair believes that is a legitimate debate. You're not being named individually. You are being complained about as a group of voters. You all complain about the electorate individually as a group. And that's all I have to say. Um, like, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh... 
at it. However, I think there are a lot of things to complain about here. We can complain about the fact that there are only 92 people who uh, paid to vote, and yet there are way more than 100 people who came back here. So I think there's a number of lessons here. I think another lesson is not so much about joke bids, but about uh, being prepared and calling in your performance. And I think uh, this is a referendum on um, giving the most qualified committee the chance to do it now and encouraging other people to come in the future and grow fandom, whether it be in Portland, which I'd love to go to in the future, or Spokane, or Boise, or Missoula, or any place. So that's why I'm in favor of picking the most qualified uh, bid now. Just a moment. Am I right from the, go ahead, go ahead. Am I right that both video cameras have run out of camera time? We still have one active camera? Mr. Chairman, there was a technical fault with the cameras due to their limitations of running for this extended period of time, and they timed out. They have both been restarted. There was a few minutes that were lost. Okay. I apologize. Just so you know, there will be a gap in the program, in the program because of that. There's, a memory. There's only so many hours of time it will record. Okay. Uh, that was a speech in favor. A speech opposed to... Yeah, okay. Speaking of opposed, you did. Okay. Right. No, no, I was talking to Mr. Mr. Rocha. I'll take you next time. Hi, my name is Ari Goldstein. Um, so, my debate here is a bit of a personal story. I've been involved in him for 16 years. I would not be standing here if it was not for Western Pond 50. Um, basically, I was asked to run dispatch for that. I've never done it before. It was my third con. I'm still here. I've been doing this for 16 years. I have not, and in those 16 years, I have not, there has not been a single year. I have not been on at least one con con. Um, if you want to talk about growing Western Pond, it's about throwing a decent, a really cool con and having people like me stick. Now, the previous speaker spoke on giving it to the most qualified committee. Um, as someone who is, high, is involved with the Portland committee, I will say this. Are there problems? Yes. The major problem I keep hearing is our webpage. That is one aspect of our convention. We have a hotel. We have a staff. We have a staff who has run conventions before. We have a staff who has run very, very successful conventions before. I haven't really gotten to know Kevin and Andy. I'd love to. I'd love to have them come work on the Portland convention. On the Portland convention, I'd love to. Come, I would love to come and help them run a bit of their own. I would. Love, I, I will sit in our Westcon table, and everyone who knows me knows I hate sitting at tables uh, for their Westcon bit when they make one. I do not believe that 2013 is the time for them to do it. Um, all things aside, this was a joke bit. They admit it was a joke bit. At this point. If I was talking to my friends who are all the fan, fans who are trying to get back here, the 35 and younger crowd, I'm 35 and my friends are mostly younger than me, um, it makes it easier to make, to be smarter than them. Um, I have no confidence in telling them they should go to bid. Because if we can work for a year, and yes, there were some presentation problems, yes, there was a website problem, but that was the only problem that was to keep us from running a WestroCon. Why should I, why, the, the question that, I, that, that I, all of my friends will be asking me is why should they bother? And much as Alex po pointed out, the big issue you're asking yourself here is not so much whether we're qualified or not, I really honestly believe that we can prove that to you, just come ask us. The question you're going to ask yourself is what effect will this have on future, on future people who are not in fandom right now or who are coming up in fandom right now and actually want to do something with the Western Con? Because there's many fantasy organizations out there that we can, that people like me and my friends and their friends can put their resources for. Whereas I have to go back and tell them, hey, we, should, we, we showed up here and we won and we lost to someone who, you guys seem great, but you started this three weeks ago. We've been doing this for a year. If you've been doing it for a year, and yes, I understand, it looks like we haven't been doing anything. We really have. We had one problem, and yes, that was promotion. It'll get fixed. And if you don't think that it'll get fixed, come help us. Tell us how to do it. That's the whole point of this of one of this Western Con, is to teach a new generation of people how to run these. If you want Western Con to continue, you need to teach new people how to run these. And we are going to do that. There are 80 people who are not, who have not that held high level positions for the most part who want to run this con. Come teach us, come help us, but let us run our con.
But on the other hand, the chair will actually remind people you may not gain pre you may not gain preference in gaining the floor by rising before another member has released the floor. But the chair recognizes it is sometimes not obvious when a member has released the floor. All right, but don't stand up unless you're trying to interrupt the speaker. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure that's why I'm calling on you now. Yeah. This, this Hildebrand. Yes, in support of. Um, this is in favor. In favor of the. Uh, yes. What I want to speak to is that, um, as in addition to being a fan, I'm also an elections inspector, and one of uh, the most important things to me is the idea of enfranchising voters, and that what's important in a democratic process is to get as much involvement as possible. I will tell you that until three weeks ago, when it was pointed out to me some of the possible concerns about the Portland bid, which were not limited to the website, um, I was a complacent person and was not concerned about voting for Westercon, even though I've attended several Westercons. However, the more I delved into the issue, the more I became concerned as a voter, and so I followed up by attending the bid selection on Friday, by speaking and asking important questions of several bids, at no point was the uh, olive country ever a joke for me. It was a means to jolt me out of complacency so that I would think more seriously about the importance of bids, about what I, as a Westercon attendee and voter, should expect from a bid, about how I should approach them, and about the level of proactivity I should have as a voter. And for that reason, I take the bid very seriously. I have taken this act very seriously. I have not been jokey at any point. And I think this has revitalized this experience for many voters, not just me. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here and voting and in support of this particular bid. Thank you. Speech in opposition to this bid, Mr. Roche. Yes, speech in opposition to this bid, Mr. Roche. I want you to think very carefully before you revote. Andy and I are willing to run a Westercon, and our decision this morning was if we won a three-quarter vote in a simple, straight-up thing, we would take it on happily. I want you also to note that I voted for Portland when their motion came up. I do not want you to change your vote because we're popular. I do not want you to change your vote out of some dread and obligation that there must be a Westercon, therefore give it to Kevin and Andy. I want you to really think about this. We have been accused by some people of a malicious, destructive bid. We were doing voter education. Leanne nailed it. That was the point. If you read our book, it was about how to decide, what to look at, what questions to ask. Ask yourself those questions very carefully before we recount this vote. Speech opposed. Uh, oh, that was in favor. Okay, yeah, time. You do understand, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm Katine, uh, and yes, I, it gets very much like rabbit season, duck season, and I do understand. <laughs> uh, I have a huge amount of sympathy for both committees. I've got friends in both groups. Way too many of my friends are smarts. So I very much sympathize with the point that Alex and the other Portland people have brought up. But the reality is that in real politics, getting in early doesn't anoint you. It is part of the gamble that you may work hard and people still may not decide you're the one who should get the vote. And this is something that all concoms have to live with. I'm sympathetic, but it is the way the world works. And if that alone would not cause me to change my vote. Uh, I am also am well aware that on the other side, that, uh, Andy and Kevin are extremely concerned about this creating any rancor or divisiveness in the group, and I really appreciate that. But I think the procedures here are very good in that we only get to reconsider something once. This cannot go on interminably. Uh, I don't know if it's out of order for me to say it, but if uh, Olive does not get the three quarters this time, I voted no on Portland, and I'll ask for reconsideration on that. They will also get another chance. Then we'll be done with it. 
Uh, and I don't think that's unreasonable that everyone says, okay, I get to have a second thought on the issue. Um, that's all I would say. Mr. Glazer. Mr. Glazer. Uh, this would be opposition. Oh, oh. It really speaks neither, but if we can go probably in any category. Um, I want you to not just listen to the few words of the people who came up here. There are some people who came up here and were on the verge of tears when they spoke. Because we care. And the people who really care about what's going on here are the people you should really listen to. Right? The ones who, whose sweat breaks on their forehead or are trembling when they speak. Right? Because we, on either side of the issue, they really care. That's what's going on here. And that's what I want you to remember. Uh, in favor of all of kinds of for what, what, is, you got a procedural issue? No, I want to be in favor. Oh, yeah, so I, I, yeah, yeah, oh gosh. Uh, there's no limit. Most people keep wanting to speak. There's no limit. I know that someone could, but no one has. All right. Uh, the uh, Ms. Foster, you've been trying several times. That's why I'm. Asking. Yeah. I, I, before you speak, I want to address. This is not a Worldcon meeting. There is no overall time limit having been set. Each person who wants to speak has a right to speak until such time as we close debate. So how do we close debate? Gain the floor and move to close debate. The next time, the next time the floor comes clear, anybody can do so. Well, yeah, but you could renew the motion to close today. Okay, proceed, Peter. Okay. Close um, to the mic. Just stand close. Just stand close. Okay. Um, gosh, I'm kind of nervous here. I don't do this very often. But, um, yeah, Kevin and Andy started off as a joke kid. But when they saw the lack of confidence that was inspired by the Portland bid, they stepped up to the plate because they care about WesterCon. And um, I'll have to admit, this is the first WesterCon I've been to since 1998. You know, I mean, thanks to Glenn and the other BASPA members. They gave me the encouragement to actually, well, and the proximity to attend this one. And um, the enthusiasm and motivation that Kevin and Andy have shown just doing their folks bid gave me a lot more confidence in the Portland bid, which at the moment is off the plate. So I mean, right now we're voting whether or not to give it to the Olive Country Committee. And, um, I'll put it this way, they've given me enough confidence to get me to agree to do another writer's workshop, <laughs> which I am sure would attract at least a couple of people to their convention. And, you know, a couple of people may not sound like a lot, but considering the downward spiral, spiral WesterCon has been in during the past several years, a couple could be a lot. A couple could be, a, you know, two, two more people could bring two more people in. And um, anyway, if, if they can give me, show me enough confidence to give, make me motivate me to want to help them out, I say give it to them. I think they'll do a lot more to help WesterCon in the future than I've seen. Portland, give us. So. Uh, move to close the debate. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah there's enough to call on this for limit anyway. Is there a second to the motion to close the debate? Second. Point of order. For what purpose does the member rise? Um, this member will state his point of order. We have more speaking in favor than against. I think it would be improper to close the debate without having. The motion, to, the motion to close debates in order regardless of how many people have spoken on one side or the other. The first, before I take, before addressing the motion to close debate, I need an informal show of hands. Who else still wants to speak on this question one way or the other? 
Thank you. Hands down. All those in favor of ending the debate and bringing the motion, make motion to a vote, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. Though the affirmative has it, the debate is closed. The question is on the motion to uh, select the Olive Country bid from Kevin Roche and Andy Trembley as the bid at uh, WesterCon 66. A three-fourths vote being necessary, I probably am going to have to uh, do a serpentine vote, but let's just see if the members have changed their minds just a little bit. All those in favor of the Olive Country bid, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. It is actually still close enough. I will have to take the vote. All those in favor? Um, well, wait, hang on. You can go ahead and just put the machine up. You'll have to put it on standby or uh, shut down in order to do it. Okay, so. Sorry about that. We've run through a lot of batteries up here. <laughs> All those in favor of uh, selecting the Olive Country bid for WesterCon 66, please stand or otherwise indicate as you can. This time I'll remember and start on the head table with up there in the balcony. That would be you, Mo. Three.
The chair is aware of a couple of things. First of all, there is a panel that's supposed to be in here, but we are not done yet, and we, can't, and we are the constitutionally prevented function. I, have, I apologize for anybody coming for that panel, but we cannot leave yet. But we also will probably declare a recess after the, after the presentation, I think, from the, from the uh, winning bid. I want to make it absolutely clear, the vote that we just took cannot be reconsidered. You already used that. The chair recognizes Kevin Roche and Andy Tremblay, the newly, the new proprietors of Mr. Western Chairman. Uh, for what purpose? Point of technical order. Yes? I need to change memory. Well, in that case, can we do a recess before you speak? Move to adjourn. Wait, second. The chair, no, no, the chair has not recognized the motion to adjourn. Uh, you're going to, I've got to go. I've got to let them make their speech. They're on the other camera. They don't really want to talk that long. Is there a member? I, I, I'd rather let them talk and then try and deal with a recess, please. You'll all be able to leave in about less than three or four minutes. Please, Andy. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We uh, went into this saying that we weren't going to engage in any parliamentary maneuvering to affect the outcome of the vote. So we had actually considered objecting to the reconsideration, but since it was not made by us, we accept your uh, we accept your uh, decision. And we actually have a three o'clock appointment that we have got to run to. <laughs> we will be available. There has been a lot of energy in all directions at this meeting. I hope that means you all want Westercon to live and breathe and grow. You're here. Yeah. What that means is we are going to be calling on you. We are going to be calling on all of you to spread the word. And we will be in Seattle next year. Um, among other things, we are obviously going to try to mend some bridges because we've hurt some feelings, which is never the plan for this bid. But we will do our absolute best to produce a Western Farm somewhere in the Western United States that everyone will have a good time at and we can grow from. And I again want to commend Gene and the Portland Committee for all the hard work they put in. I know what they've been doing. The chair has a procedural question. What's that? A procedural vote before attempting any recesses or other issues. Okay. Um, is there any objection to ordering the ballots to destroy and committing the ballots? Committing the ballots. Without objection, the tellers are directed to destroy the ballots. The result of the election is final. Is there any objection to recessing for five minutes? Yeah. I hear objections. All right. For all right, there are a lot of people standing in this room. I think there are at least two people attempting to do so, and I get three attempting to get the chair's attention. With those people who are not trying to get the chair's attention. All right, Mr. Poe. I'd like to take a minute for this. Your seat is Western Farm Essentially. Can we? I think. I, no, actually, we've run out of battery time. For what, pur I, for what procedural purpose, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> There is a motion to adjourn, which does take priority. Uh, it is actually debatable. Is there anyone who wants to debate it? All those in favor of adjourn, yes, for what purpose? Um, what items what remain on the agenda? There are no constitutional amendments. There's no actual business. There are no pending constitutional amendments awaiting ratification. There is no business that was received in advance, but I was expecting there might have been some introduced, but nobody submitted anything in advance. Should this meeting adjourn, we will have nothing to pass on to next year's business meeting, and we will be done. That was the question, the procedural question. All those in favor of adjourning, raise your hand. Hands down. Those opposed, hands down. The affirmative has it. And at 2.38 p.m., the business meeting of the 64th Western Con is adjourned.